This next demo is a fun one, and it's a good example of how to combine two very different types of charts together to create something totally brand new and unique. So in this case, we're actually going to be combining a donut chart with a scatter plot of all things to create a gauge and needle effect. And so that type of gauge chart visualization can be a really nice, really simple way to show where a given value falls along a certain scale. So in the gauge chart tab, you can see I've put some objects in place to start to create a little bit of a template. These shapes will just create almost like a background effect for our gauge. Uh, and these text boxes will just align with different points uh, along the edge of the gauge. So I've got a few placeholder columns here. I've got chart value in cell A2. This is the user entered value uh, that you'll be plotting on the chart. It's really only one value that's going to be shown. And then a max value in cell B2. In this case, we're looking at a 0 to 10 scale. Could be 0 to 100, 0 to 1,000, really could be anything. So the first thing that we need to do is create a donut chart, which will serve as the background of our gauge. And in this case, I want a donut with five segments along the top half of the circle. So to do that, I'm going to type 10%, copy and paste that total of five times. And then in cell C7, I'm going to type 50%. The reason I'm doing that is because I need these to add up to 100%, even though I won't be using the 50% chunk. What I'll basically do is just format this 50% slice with no fill so that it becomes invisible. And then I have five equally sized segments along the top half of my semicircle. So let's grab these values from C2 through C7 and insert a donut. Don't need a chart title here or a legend. And all I'll do is select that 50% piece, format the data point, and give it no fill and no line. And then for the chart itself, I'm going to format the chart area, no fill, no line. And that's good for now. We're going to make, obviously, a few additional formatting adjustments with colors and alignments momentarily. But the next piece that I want to do is start preparing my data for the scatter plot values that will be overlaid on top of this donut chart. Because basically the idea here is to create a combo chart that plots the donut slices as well as x values and y values to feed my scatter plot. So step one to generate those values is to calculate the current value in terms of degrees. And that sounds complicated, but it's really not. First things first, if we think about the current value as a portion or percentage of the max, in this case a value of 5 would return 0.5 or 50%, all we need to do is multiply that by the 180 total degrees in our semicircle to translate that into degrees instead of a percentage. So there you go, value of 5 out of 10 means we'd be looking for a vertical line or a 90 degree right angle. Now to figure out the actual x and y values that we would need to plot along a scatter plot to define the position of the needle, we'll need to dust off our trigonometry books and go back to the basics. And I found a website that's actually really helpful to understand this, so let's take a quick look. So here we are at www.mathsisfun.com slash geometry slash unit circle dot html. And this is a great interactive visualization that shows the relationships between angles sines, cosines, and tangents. And the important thing to watch here is as I move along the arc of this circle, the green line, which is the height of this point, or the y value, is defined by the sine function, or the sine of the angle. The blue line, which is the x value of this point, is defined by the cosine of the angle. So with that in mind, I know that we can use Excel's sine and cosine trigonometry functions to define the exact positioning of this point, which when you think about it, will essentially serve as the end point of my needle. So let's give this a shot in Excel. All right, so the needle of my gauge needs two points because those two points will be connected by a line, which essentially creates the needle itself. First point has to be the origin, or 0, 0. And that really reflects this point right here, the base of the needle that will never move. It will always be fixed at 0, 0. The second point is the point that I need to define using those sine and cosine functions that I just mentioned. So remember, the y values are defined by sine. 
So I can just type equals sine, and here's the catch. I can't just do the sine of the degrees because Excel is actually looking for this number in terms of radians, but luckily they have a function to convert it by just typing radians in here. So sine radians d2. There you go, that returns a 1, which in this case is exactly what we're looking for, because with a value of 5 out of 10, we'd be looking for a vertical needle with a y value of 1, which is the max. For x values, let's start with just a cosine function. So cosine radians d2, close it out with two parentheses, and there we go. So now we've got the points that we need for our scatter plot, and it just comes down to adding that as a new series to create our combo chart. So I'm going to right click the donut, select data, I'm going to add a new series that we'll call needle. And the series values for now, I'm just going to select one of these, either the X or the Y. In this case, I'll select the Y values in F2 through F3. Press OK. And as you can see, Excel defaulted to just adding a second ring of my donut. So if we go into chart tools and change the chart type, we can go into combo and series one, which is my donut, will remain a donut. And my needle series that I just added will be a scatter with straight lines. I can press OK. And now that we've defined our second series as a scatter plot, we can go back into select data can edit the data for that needle, and now we can enter our proper x and y values. So x values are going to be e2 through e3, and y will be f2 through f3. There we go. So now we've done the hard part. We've gotten the data defined in a way that makes sense. Now we need to just make some tweaks and adjustments to these charts to get things to align and look nice. So first things first, on my scatter plot, I'm going to right click and format the x-axis. I want a minimum of negative 1 and a maximum of 1. Same deal with the y, minimum of negative 1, maximum of 1. And I can actually delete the axis itself because I don't need the numbers. I can delete the grid lines and I can format this line any way that I choose. So why don't we just make it a solid black with a little bit of a shadow effect on it as well. So there we go. Now onto our donut. Let's format the donut series. What I want to do, see how it's rotated on its side? I want to flip it so that my equally sized segments are on top. So I can change the angle of the first slice all the way to 270 degrees. There you go. Increase the donut hole size a bit. That looks nice. Now let's drag this combo chart right into our template can make it a little bit bigger just so that it fits nicely. There we go. And why don't we color code the segments so that the colors represent something meaningful. For instance, if this gauge reflects values that progress from good to bad, then maybe we want green on the left and red on the right. So we can just give it a solid fill, maybe a dark green there, a lighter green for the second segment, a yellow for the third, orange for the fourth, and finally a dark red for the fifth. That just really helps to visually emphasize that progression from good to bad or bad to good. So let's test it out and see if this thing is working as we'd expect it to. We do a chart value of 2.5. Well, that looks wrong. It should be the opposite. What if we do value of 10? See, that's aligning with 0, which seems a little off. If we do 0, it's shifting over to the max. If we return to our online tool, you can see that in this case, the angles are increasing as we move counterclockwise along the arc of this circle. Whereas in our case, we want our angle to be increasing as we move clockwise along the arc of the circle. So all we need to do, it's a very easy fix, is just invert this cosine function by adding a negative. So we're taking the negative cosine now, and there you go. So now a value of 5 is straight up and down. And as we increase, we're moving clockwise along this gauge. So hopefully you enjoyed that. One of the more unusual Excel tutorials you'll probably ever see. But I think it's a great example of really pushing the combo chart concept to a whole different level.